Good morning from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. Welcome to Kentucky Newsmakers. We're honored to have as our guest this morning the governor elect of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Matt Bevan. Republican Bevan won convincingly Tuesday and is now beginning the process of putting his administration together. It will be a quick pace for Bevan as he prepares for his inauguration and then just weeks later the arrival of the General Assembly in Frankfurt. He will also have to present his first budget and fill hundreds of appointed positions in state government. Although he has never held office before, Governor-elect Bevan got here with hard work and strong talent as a communicator of his basic ideas about what government should and should not be doing. He has made his points. He will uh, likely also again uh, be talking today as he arrives in the uh, governor's office about the fact that he made very few promises or obligations along the way. Governor-elect Matt Bevan with us today. Welcome, sir, and congratulations. Bill, thank you. Great to be here with you. Appreciate you coming in on what I know has been a very busy week and a busy time for you right now. Uh, you won a convincing uh, nine-point victory, carried all but a handful of counties, carried counties in every region of the Commonwealth. To what do you uh, attribute such a sweeping victory? I tell you, I, I attribute it to the people demanding to be heard. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just the point man. I'm one guy. I did bring a message as best I was able. I provided a vision for people. I did not make promises. In fact, I went into counties where people wanted certain things to be promised to them. And if anything, I often told people that they would get quite the opposite of, of financial reality. All that to say, people want something to believe in. The people of Kentucky have very clearly spoken that they want to chart a different direction. They want something to believe in. They want a vision for this state. They, too, believe that we could be better than we are. I think that is what we saw. I'm not at all surprised that we won. I expected we'd win. We had this conversation uh, some days prior to the election. But I am surprised by the degree of unanimity. The absolutely 106 of 120 counties is certainly unprecedented, and it's a powerful statement. I'm humbled by it, and I hear it loud and clear. The people have spoken, and I hear it. I really do. As you said, uh, you were seeing those late polls indicating that you were trailing and so forth, and you never believed them. I didn't, because again, I've, there's nobody who has spent more time on the ground in this state than I have. There's nobody who's driven more miles, talked to more people, and had their finger more on the pulse. And I knew for a fact that this, these were not reflective of what was happening in the actual electorate. How is this going over with the Bevan family? Uh, you uh, have uh, nine children. A lot of people are asking, uh, are you going to move everybody into the governor's mansion? Or what, oh, what's going on here? All these things are, are <laughs> conversations that are having where it's not really configured, frankly, to handle a family of our size. Right. And that may uh, dictate some of what we can or cannot do. But we intend to be integrally involved uh, with not only the, the mansion itself, but the community and, uh, and with our role uh, as a family uh, and looking forward to it. But we're walking before we run here. Tuesday was a, a big night to, for two women as well. The next first lady, uh, whom we'll discuss uh, in just a moment, and Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton uh, will be the first African-American in statewide office and the first woman elected as Lieutenant Governor since 1979. I, I cannot tell you how proud I am of Janine Hampton, how proud I am uh, and grateful as I am to the people of Kentucky who have elected for themselves, frankly, an extraordinary, extraordinary individual. Janine Hampton is the embodiment of the American dream. She really is. She's an example to anyone from any so socioeconomic uh, corner of the spectrum, from any uh, walk of life. She is somebody who grew up, as you know, in abject poverty, has made her own way, a degree in industrial engineering, a master's of business administration, a decorated war veteran, somebody who actually was just inducted into the Kentucky Veterans Hall of Fame a couple of weeks ago, somebody with a brilliant mind, a gracious spirit, and a wisdom that frankly uh, is going to be very beneficial to the people of Kentucky. I'm delighted by the history side of it, so be it. It's the value of what she brings to the equation that I think is going to have the greatest impact on Kentucky. And you uh, briefly introduced your lovely wife who, who seemed to not be wanting the spotlight so much on election night, uh, yeah. but does she look forward to being First Lady of the Commonwealth? I, you'd have to ask her that, <laughs> That's what but I I, I, in some measure, she, Good answer. <laughs> she, she, I will say this, she is an amazing woman. She will be an outstanding first lady, but she does not love the limelight. Is she like politics at all? I mean, is it... Uh... She's knowledgeable about it, but she'd just as soon have conversations one-on-one -on -one as to be out, you know, prognosticating in front of the masses on these things. But she's the mother of nine children. 
She's a registered nurse by training. My wife, she used to be the charge nurse in an ER, uh, is very used to dealing with multiple things, and many of them traumatic. Uh, now in politics, I guess it'll move from traumatic to dramatic, uh, perhaps, but I think she'll be fantastic. Does she uh, give you uh, some perspective? I mean, she uh, does. Yeah, so from yeah. time to time, you do discuss issues. and She's my closest confidant on many things, as you would imagine. I've, she's been, you know, my wife for close to 20 years. We've known each other and been close for 25 years, and uh, there's nobody who, who knows me better. Uh, so, yes, she does. Very quickly, you named a transition team. Uh, you, uh, th that, that team is, is obviously uh, uh, broad in its experience. Uh, people come from across the Commonwealth and in various disciplines and uh, professions. Uh, you had to have been working on this before the election. We were, and again, without being presumptuous, um, we did know we were going to win. I had absolute confidence that we would, and so for many weeks now, on Saturdays, pretty much all day, this group has come together, and others as well, who have come together and begun to build out the infrastructure upon which, for these next five weeks, we are going to flesh things out. So we built the skeleton, and now that team has been announced. There are many more already behind it. There will be a transition team of 100-plus people. Uh, they are now being put together in committees behind these committee leaders and we are going to drink out of the water hose for uh, the fire hose perhaps I guess for the next uh, five weeks and we will get this done and I'll tell you this state will be well served much work has already happened and much is yet to be done but we are well positioned to get it done and what have you told that transition team that, that you want to see happen how do you want to uh uh, hiring to be uh, carried out. Uh, what? Did, how are they to carry out your uh, your plans? You alluded to this earlier, and it's important for people uh, to to take this away. And that is. I have made no promises to anybody, and this is good for Kentucky. There is not a single favor I need to pay back, not one. Not one promise of a position, not one favorable payback to a constituency, nothing. This affords me, on this transition team, I've got Republicans, I've got Democrats, I've got Independents. I've got people who are adults, who bring solutions, who bring ideas, people who are willing to be public servants, people that are willing to do something for the Commonwealth with nothing in it for themselves. Some of these people may move on to be in positions, but not one person person on a single committee is involved with a committee in the transition that they will ever have any involvement with going forward. There will be nobody trying to grease their wheels or do something to benefit themselves. We've removed any possibility of that. I'm looking for servants and for adults and for people who are solution-minded. Does it give you some flexibility as well because of the fact that you while you gave basic principles out there and in the rough and tumble of a campaign there are questions asked that you have to directly answer but uh, if you have made no commitments, no promises, does it give you the opportunity to go in and assess matters and perhaps uh, back up on some things that uh, some people may have thought you might have been going in a certain direction uh, or, or to, to uh, gather new information? Absolutely. I think anybody who is an effective leader, I mean, I've been a former active duty military officer. I've been the CEO of, of, of various companies. I, I understand what leadership is, and, and no leader has all the ideas themselves. They are only as good as those they surround themselves by, if in fact they delegate properly by giving, holding people responsible, but more critically, giving them authority. If you delegate properly and surround yourself by the right kinds of people, they are always going to have more wisdom collectively, by far, by many multiples than any one individual in charge. In this case, myself as governor, I will only be as good as those around me and the advice that I take and the inputs that I take. And so, of course, as we move forward, there will always be, my intent is not to do what I want to do, but what is the right thing to do, and who ultimately benefits from it within the Commonwealth. That is my goal. So you would say that you could come in and have some uh, some different perspectives uh, a few weeks after taking office, realizing that, well, maybe this is how things have been done in Frankfurt, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, very possibly, absolutely. But I will say this. I've done more homework, I would think, than the average person who's never been in the political arena. So I came at this to the extent that I took positions and made statements along this campaign trail. They are ones that I'm confident that I can follow through on. But I am always willing. I mean, I spoke with uh, as a senior Democrat leader in this state earlier on my way over here to the studio. Uh, we had conversation about some of these very same things. I'm always, my ear in phone line is always open uh, to anybody. You and Attorney General Jack Conway had a tough battle. You had some tense and terse exchanges uh, during that campaign. On election night, he congratulated you. He said he wants to help move Kentucky forward. Uh, is it important to you that the election now be in the past and that Kentuckians move to uh, 
ahead together. Absolutely. I mean, really, we're all in the same boat. And it was the, this, the tone I tried to strike in my comments that night is that we are one Kentucky, Democrat, Republican, uh, independent alike. We are all in this boat called the USS Kentucky, and, uh, or whatever the right nomenclature would be. But the point is, we've got an obligation to have each other's backs and to follow uh, the course together. And so this is what I'm committed to doing. I don't spend my life looking in the rearview mirror. I never have. I've always looked out the windshield. Every now and then you might look in the side view, uh, but I, if you dwell in the rearview mirror, you're going to get into trouble. I look out the windshield, that's what I'm going to do as governor. This tight time frame doesn't uh, uh, intimidate you. Uh, no. Five We're weeks ready. to an administration, three weeks after that, the legislature is there, and you have to plop a $20 billion spending plan uh, out there to yeah. be looked at. It's, again, I, would I love to have more time? Of course, who wouldn't? And yet I've known about this. I've anticipated back to what we talked about. We have front run our ability to get in front of this as best we're able, uh, and we will govern uh, as is expected. I'm grateful for the fact I've got the chief of staff recently came in from a, 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 another state's uh, governor who lent them as part of this process. And one of the greatest compliments our team has gotten is this person was blown away by how prepared uh, our state is for this transition and the things that are already in place. And it's a testament to Mac Brown, uh, who is the chair of this transition team, and all those on this committee uh, who are going to make sure that Kentucky moves forward uh, in a timely manner. Have you so far or have you needed at this point any cooperation from the, uh, from the Bashir administration? Have you gotten I've that? I've spoken with Governor Bashir and we have gotten indeed uh, some communication with them as to people who are points of contact. Our team is already in contact with his team and although we've not gotten into the substantive meetings yet two days in, uh, nonetheless we've had already a lot of dialogue and that's good. Again, I'm not playing around. This isn't a game to me. We're going to move forward with a sense of purpose uh, and we're going to get the job done. Governor, like Matt Bevan is with us, and we'll have our remaining moments with him. Talk about some of the issues coming up over the next few months on WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. Welcome back to WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. We are continuing our conversation with the governor-elect of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Matt Bevan, and uh, he's uh, gracious enough to come in on a very uh, busy week when he's just been elected and trying to get his uh, transition team off and running in this new administration underway. Um, governor Bevan, uh, uh, officer from Richmond, uh, Kentucky, uh, Daniel Ellis, uh, gunned down in the line of duty this week. Uh, you mentioned to me before we started this interview, this kind of thing is happening too much. There is too much tension and violence out there. Yeah, the thing that concerns me is there's an utter disregard for our first line protectors, our law enforcement officers. We have, as a society, not held them in high enough regard. And you look at what happened to Officer Ellis. It has happened in the past, but it's tragic. There's been way too much of it this year. Uh, my heart truly breaks for his wife, his wife Katie, and they had a three-year-old son. Uh, this is heartbreaking, not only for that family, but for that community and for the law enforcement community. And it is going to be my intent as governor of this state to re-instill, starting with me, an understanding that these are folks who are putting themselves on the line for us and that they deserve our respect. They deserve our cooperation at every turn. There's an old saying that the fish rots from the head down. I think in this country, starting with our president, I'll be honest, there's been a disregard for law enforcement. We have vilified the police, and we've made it too easy for people to think that they're the enemy. It's very much the opposite. They're there to do a job that most of us don't have any interest or ability to do, and they put themselves on the line, and they do things that we need done. And I will be a governor who makes clear that I have the utmost respect, and I will have their back, and I will expect the Commonwealth of Kentucky to do the same. Issues will be coming uh, quickly, obviously, and many of those were discussed uh, during the campaign. We mentioned that you want to get in and assess some matters before you make some decisions. I would assume on the health care issue that would be one of those. It is. I mean, these are things that uh, are going to have to be addressed. There's a cost to these things. Uh, there is, a, 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 you know, logistics uh, that are involved. We had, with the recent collapse of the you know, Kentucky Health Co-op, frankly, the majority of people who already had qualified health plans have already lost their coverage. So the very thing that so often folks were concerned about happening, people having to go through re-enrollment and change plans, well, they're going to have to anyway. And so it is still my intent, without question, to use this open enrollment period that we just entered a couple days ago to go through open enrollment, transitioning people from the Connect program, which is the state level Obamacare exchange, to the federal level. It is the law. It is required that we use one. The vast majority of states use the federal level. 35 plus of them use the federal level exchange. We will join those ranks. 
in our po folks will use the federal level exchange. You're saying in this enrollment period or next time? In this enrollment period. Yeah. I just, I mean, already the, we're moving people to this. Some of this may be beyond our ability to control. And so, but this open enrollment period, it stays open uh, through the top of the year. And then it, there are chances for people to reopen. So some of this is going to be based on the logistics. But we have got to, as a state, recognize there is a cost to these promises we've made. And if it is more than we can afford to pay, then in reality, we're lying to people. I will not be the governor of a state that is misleading people with false promises. The Medicaid expansion, is that a decision that's uh, pending with you? That's another example of what we're talking about. In fact, that was essentially what I was alluding to with that last comment, which is we cannot afford to have 25 to 30 percent of Kentuckians on Medicaid with the current Medicaid reimbursement model. If we use the traditional model, which has historically been 70-30, for the expanded is moving to a 90-10, but ultimately, it will move to 7030 as well, and we know that. We've already seen indication coming from the federal budgeting process that that's what it's going to cost. We don't have an extra billion dollars a year in our state budget for this, which means we still have need. How are we going to cover it? And I have talked about 1115 waivers. We will be applying to CMS for these 1115 waivers, taking a block grant. We may not save money per se, but we can do more. And I think if by doing more and doing it more efficiently, doing it more cost effectively, ultimately we will save money and that's what we need to you do. You have said that school choice is important to you and that's an area that you plan to pursue with legislation, I would take it, yes. to open up uh, what charter schools and other options? Again, walking before we run, but absolutely. We're one of seven states in the U.S. that has no competition for public education dollars. Competition is a good thing. It should not be a threat to people. Anyone who's competent, anyone who's capable should not be threatened. We have many competent, capable teachers, uh, administrators, superintendents, principals within the public school system. They should not see this as a threat. It will, iron sharpens iron. This will be good. We'll start with our failing schools. We'll start with public charter schools in our failing school systems. But again, this has to happen legislatively. We'll make our way through that. We will not chase every rabbit at the same time. Because there's an old saying, if you chase two rabbits, you won't catch either one of them. One rabbit that is uh, jumping up and down for attention certainly is the pension situation. Yes. Uh, the, the state uh, retirees, both within the, uh, the state system and the teacher's retirement system. Uh, do you have a plan to address that uh, quickly, or will that take time? That has got, of course, in a biennial budget session, and in a session that we're heading into where 11 cents of the dollar is what's not spoken for. 89 cents of the dollar is already spoken for in this budgeting process. So we're trying to cover a dollar's worth of need with 11 cents. That's going to consume a lot of the oxygen in this session, but we must address the pension crisis. I had said this on the campaign trail. It didn't matter who won, ultimately. It has to be addressed. And so, yes, that is rabbit number one uh, in many respects. It really is. <laughs> uh, for those people who are out there watching right now and listening to you, whether they voted for you or voted against you uh, or didn't vote, which was most people, uh, what would you have them know about the man who will be leading the Commonwealth for the next four years? I'm a simple guy. I, again, I'm a guy who doesn't make promises that I don't intend to keep. I was raised to let my yes be yes and my no be no. I was raised to respect God, to respect my parents, respect other people. I was raised to live by the golden rule, treat people the way I want to be treated. This is how we ran our campaign. We took the high road. We gave people a true choice between the kind of expectation of wearing people out and taking them down or offering solutions and a vision. I offered solutions. I offered a vision for Kentucky. The people of Kentucky have embraced it. What I want them to know is that a guy who grew up below the poverty level, who's lived a simple life but been very blessed, a guy who's a military veteran, a guy who has lived the American dream. I hear them. I've walked in the shoes and in the boots of many of them. And I'm somebody who will have an open ear and an open door. I don't care where the ideas come from. There is no monopoly on good ideas, Republican, Democrat, independent alike. The good ideas come from the people. A government of and by and for the people is only effective if the people get engaged. While it was a low turnout bill, I'm grateful for the fact that it was as much as 50 percent higher than anyone thought it was going to be. Because the people, while they didn't turn out in good numbers, it was far more than the last gubernatorial election and significantly more than anyone anticipated. The people are demanding to be heard, and I'm listening. Do you uh, anticipate any uh, executive orders? the day you take office that you would uh, that you will issue I'm gonna clear up this county clerk issue I've, I've spoken to this it can be done it should be resolved ultimately legislatively we're gonna take the names of the county clerks off of these forms we're gonna make this a form that can be downloadable and or picked up in hard copy probably hard copy initially uh, until we get the the IT uh, 
background set up on this to make it actually part of probably the Secretary of State's website. We'll figure that out. It's done in other states like Hawaii. But that is something we're going to clean up right out of the get-go because most clerks want this. The people of Kentucky want this. We'll get it done. Governor Lake Matt Bevan, thanks for being here. We Thank appreciate you, it. Sir. Back with some look at some scenes from election night on Kentucky Newsmakers in a moment. Welcome back to WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. A look back now at some of what was said on election night. We're going to hear from Democrat Jack Conway and from Republican Matt Bevan, the governor elect of the Commonwealth. So I placed a call to Governor elect Bevan and wished him well. It was a cordial phone call. I told him that I remain positive about moving this state forward and that if he ever needed any assistance, that this Democrat was at his disposal. You know, I want to thank my brilliant running mate, Sandy Overly, the first woman in the history of Kentucky elected to House leadership. I want to thank my parents, Tom and Barbara Conway, and my siblings who are up here. Mom and Dad, we're a long way from a farm in Union County or the rail yards of South Louisville, and I love you very much. And I want to thank my remarkable family, my lovely wife, Elizabeth, my precious daughters, Eva and Alex. Eva, Alex, Daddy's going to be home a lot. <laughs> Those three are the loves of my life. And because of them, and because of the journey that I'm on with them, Tonight, I consider myself the most blessed man on the face of the earth. And, to the people of Kentucky, I want to say to you, I respect your decision. I hope we can always work together in common purpose. I love our state. I love its diversity. I love everything about it. I love Kentucky. And I want to thank, and I want to thank the people of Kentucky for the tremendous honor of allowing me to serve as the 49th Attorney General in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Thank you. May God bless you. And may God bless Kentucky. There is no reason that we must apologize for the core principles that make us an exceptional nation, that make us an exceptional state. We are remarkably alike. I have driven 95,000 miles around this state in the last two years. That's a lot of miles. I've seen many of you many times. And some of you I've seen for the first time tonight. But I'll tell you this, we are, for all the things that separate us, we are incredibly alike. And I want us tonight to go out of here inspired to unite. I challenge each of you tonight to find somebody as you go about your business tomorrow, somebody who you know was on the other side of this particular battle, this particular political equation, and reach out to them. Extend your hand, literally, figuratively, whatever the case might be that we are only going to be the greatest version of ourselves if, in fact, we are one Kentucky. It must happen. My challenge to you is do not fail to take the high road as we have done to this point. Continue to take the high road because this is the opportunity for Kentucky to be a beacon to the nation. The values that we hold, the principles that we hold, the work ethic that we hold, the high road that we will take, this will change the tenor of what happens in the 2016 race. It truly will because it will be you who represent the fact that Kentucky is a crown jewel in the crown of America. We truly are. I will simply say this in closing. I am grateful to you. I am more grateful to you than I would be able to express even if I were to try. I am humbled by the challenge before us. I am humbled by the opportunity before us. I'm grateful for the fact that you have been so generous with your support to so many others who have run as well from the conservative side of the aisle. And I'll tell you, while I'm a Republican, and I've always been a Republican, and I'm proud for the fact that this is a great night for the Republican Party in the state of Kentucky, I'm also, I'm also grateful for the fact that, even more importantly, this is a great night for conservatives in the state of Kentucky.
We have a lot of work ahead of us. We have a lot of work to do. It's going to be time to get the overalls on, get the boots on, get out of bed. But this is our opportunity to go out and seize it. I am grateful to each and every one of you for being here. Enjoy this night. But do not forget that we are one Kentucky. Black, white, rural, urban, at both ends of the socioeconomic spectrum. We represent an opportunity as a ticket to be something that Kentucky has never seen, representation of who we are, a seat at the table for people from every perspective of our state. This is going to change the tenor of this state, just as it changed the tenor of this election and the way we executed this campaign. I truly think we as a state have the ability to change the tenor of what politics looks like, what representation looks like, what a seat at the table means, what it will mean when Kentucky shines like the beacon that it will be. I'm grateful to you. I'm thankful to you. God bless you, and may God bless the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Thank you. And that is Kentucky Newsmakers here on WKYT. We want to thank you very much for joining us. Of course, we hope you'll be along with us for all the latest news throughout this weekend on WKYT. I'll see you bright and early on WKYT this morning. We start at 4.30, Monday through Friday, on mid-morning at 10, and on WKYT News at noon. Updates always at WKYT.com. Follow me on Twitter at Kentucky Newsmakers. And make it a good week ahead.